the model is trained and we want to see how we performed. Obviously, only looking at the model right now, decision tree regressor, okay, what is it? How, how is it predicting? Is it good? Is it bad? We don't know. And what do we do at that point is we get our metrics out. So these metrics are basically a way of quantifying how good our model is or how bad it is. So basically I'll, I'll go over them one by one, but what I do here is getting the model that we have, which is the tree model, the decision tree model. And I am predicting everything that is in the uh, test data set right now. And then I will be comparing it to the, the I will be comparing the predictions to the test uh, target values and see how, we, how good we did. Uh, I will not go super into detail about what these are, but like just to give you an idea of what these are, uh, mean absolute error is basically literally the difference between what we predicted and what the actual value was. If the actual value was that the person paid $15 and our model predicted that $20, then we'll say, okay, the difference is $5. And it's absolute because even if it's minus five or five, we just, you know, take the absolute value. And then we take the mean of for every single data point in a test set. So apparently we were able to predict inside a $3 limit. So plus minus $3 is what we predict, which is pretty good. And um, mean squared error is when you take again, the, um, the difference between what you predicted and what the actual value is. And then you take the square of it. So what it does is basically, if there is a bigger difference, it exaggerates it better. So you see um, a number that's way higher, you know. So if, if it's if there are the the difference of three dollars and twenty dollars, you know, what is the uh, mean absolute error going to be? Somewhere in between, right? But if you want to say small errors are fine, but bigger the error, the worse for me, then this is the thing that you should look at you want to minimize your mean squared error. And then we have root mean squared error. And that is basically the rooted version of the squared error. So why we have this is basically we want to see how this relates to the mean absolute error. We want to still exaggerate the higher errors, but we want to want, we want it to be on the same level as the mean absolute error so that we can compare the two and see if there are a lot of big um, uh, errors that we made. R2 score is um, a score that shows, that shows us how good uh, from 100%, how good our model fits the pattern of the data. So it is from zero to one and zero means that your model is, if our score is zero, it means that your model is basically doing as well as just always predicting the mean value. So that's not very good. It could also be uh, negative, and that would mean that it's doing worse than if you always predicted the, the mean value for the, the, the thing that you're trying to predict, the target feature. And one is perfect, basically. It means that you're doing everything you are right, and your model is perfectly fitting the pattern of your data set. So this is actually very good, what we have here. And I also want to plot uh, what we have here. I can even make this bigger to see it clearer. Okay, it kind of looks pretty all right, actually. You know, so this is the true values and this is the predicted values. And if it was all in a straight line, that would mean that it fit perfectly. But you know, we have the pattern, we caught the pattern. But maybe this is a little bit too good to be true. And most of the time when that happens, that means that you did something wrong. So let's, let's, let's look at this. What did I, what might I have I done wrong? So I included the pickup location ID, transaction month, transaction day, and transaction hour. I have my categorical features and I have trip distance. So this is what we call a leakage in machine learning or in data science. Trip distance exactly correlates with total amount, right? How long you go, how far you go, determines specifically how much money that you're going to pay. I mean, it might depend on the, if you're going to the airport or if you're going outside the state, etc. I guess that might cost you more, but in general, the further you go, the more money you're going. So if I include this value, if I include this feature, 
I will basically be cheating because I'm saying, you know, I'm going to go this far and then try to predict how much money I need to pay. But you might say, okay, but well, that's fine. That means that it's a good feature. But when you think about it, we will actually not have the knowledge of how far a passenger will want to go before that happens. Before they get into your cab, you will have no idea how far a passenger will want to go. And what we're trying to predict here is basically think of it like the day before someone who works in the New York Taxi Drivers Association uh, desk in the office will say, okay, I will try to predict how far people will want to go or how much money the average person will pay in this region in a given hour in a place in a region of New York. They have no idea of, they have no chance of knowing how far the people will want to go. So in a way, trip distance is kind of a proxy of the total amount. So I should not be including this in my model. So that's why I have this great model here, which, you know, predicts it very precisely with only $3 uh, plus or minus $3 mistake. But that, this is not the model that I can use. So what I need to do is actually, I need to do everything that I just did, except not include the trip distance because that is not something that I can use. So let's see what my performance is if I do that. Yeah, and as you can see, it is significantly lower now. My model does not fit the, the pattern of the data so well anymore. My absolute error is higher. My mean squared error is higher. Root mean squared error is higher. This is more like it. <laughs> this is more like what I was expecting. So that's good. And let's see on the plot how it fits. Again, I want to make this smaller to see you clearly. And yeah, that's not an amazing model. As I said, our best case scenario would be a straight line. Um, but yeah, this is not even close. So yeah, the next thing that we are going to need to do is to create some new features and then hope that they will help us. Uh, perform better and try to predict this uh, target feature better uh, and yeah that, that is basically my favorite part because that is the part that requires the most creativity uh, that would be great if you can give it a chance even if you don't want to write the uh, Python code just try to make a list of all the features that you can come up with that might affect how much people will pay for a taxi or how you know how much a taxi driver would make on average in a given region of New York in a given hour. So try to think of, you know, what, what, what might affect a person's uh, willingness to take a taxi or not. You know, what might affect how many, how, like, how much on average a taxi driver will make in a region in a given hour. So just give it a thought and yeah, I'll, I'll show you what I taught in the next video.